Hello, and welcome to the Kathleen Spracklin Podcast. I am a woman on a mission to assemble a cadre of writers, thinkers, and teachers who are transforming the world one character at a time. And it all starts with one thing, a deep understanding of human emotion, why people do what they do, and the forces that drive them. To gain that understanding, I am mining the intersection of psychology, theology, and philosophy to make you a better writer. This is episode number seven, Determining Your Character Profile, part two, Your Anchor Traits. Like yesterday, this will be a bit of a workshop. Some simple questions and a little bit of story writing to help establish your character profile. We're working from file cards and we're going to create little stories that will fit on a four by six file card. Or if you prefer to use a journal, you'll use the file card to reference where in your journal your little stories are. Today we're talking about the anchor traits. If there is something about you that you're pretty happy about. It's something that it took you quite some time to achieve. Uh, it was once quite a struggle for you, but now it's pretty darn solid. It doesn't give you much trouble anymore at all. And you're very, very happy about that. And you hope, if anything, it would only get more solid for you. Uh, you just, now that it's pretty much under your control, you don't have to hardly think about it. You basically just do what's right. So take a moment and think about what that character trait is for you. Did you take a moment to think about it? Okay, now I want you to write a little story on a four by six file card, put anchor trait across the top, and in your story, I want you to tell about the very first time you we can remember having that character trait pretty solid for you. Did you take the time to write that story? Good. Now think about the most recent time that you can remember thinking about that trait and being so happy that it is now so solid for you. And take some time and write down that story. Did you get your story written? There might be more than one. Go ahead and write as many as you can think of that are in that category. At least one or two. Think about things that you've got pretty well knocked now that you were a challenge for you before. Be sure to label these file cards that they are your anchor traits. We'll give them a name later after we've collected all of our stories. This should be a, a lot of fun to help build up our entire character profile diagram. Well, for part two, I'm going to continue a little bit about how I came to be working on these tools for fiction writers. Um, I myself am not a fiction writer. I created these tools, not for me, but for a precious niece. I had been up to visit my niece, and, uh, who is homeschooling three boys, and she has always wanted to be a writer, and she had put the writing aside because she simply didn't have enough time to spend any extended period of time writing with taking care of three boys and homeschooling them. That made me very sad and made her sad, but all of the books that she saw in writing were basically saying, if you don't have at least two hours a day uninterrupted to write, give it up. And she kind of took it seriously. So I tried to suggest some simple things throughout my career as a computer programmer. 
most of my life I was incredibly busy, but I always found a little bit of time here and there to do needlework or sewing or the hobbies that I really enjoyed. So I tried to encourage her to say, you know, even if it's only 10 to 20 minutes a day, those time periods will add up and you'll get your story written. But there was another challenge that was a bigger challenge for her, and that was the problem of trying to reconnect with your emotions. Because if you're in the middle of a story and you have to put it down because the kids are up from their nap, then where are you going to be the next time you pick it up? You're going to end up having to figure out where you were in the story and what the emotions were in the story. And that could easily take up the next 10 or 20 minutes of, that you have available to write. So I returned home, but I couldn't forget her challenge. And it stayed with me from August till April before I worked through a solution that I was pretty sure would work. And I want to share a little bit about how that solution came about. I was uh, newly retired, well, not totally retired, pretty close to retired. Um, still getting a few requests for my former employer from time to time, but I was basically slowing down in the number of hours I was working each week. And I began very interested um, in the concept of a Zettelkasten uh, note box. You might see behind me some of my uh, note box. And I began to keep an analog Zettelkasten. And a Zettelkasten is a file card system. I love the analog where it's handwritten, and that's why I keep going back to these file cards. There's something about handwriting that really makes a connection with your brain. And there's something major about a Zettelkasten that takes cards, and when you go to file your new informational card, it's going to bump up against the card in your system that it is most closely allied to. And that's a pretty powerful thing when it comes around because you come back into contact with thoughts and ideas you had months earlier, sometimes years earlier, although mine's still just only a couple of years old. So when you, when you re-encounter these ideas, it's almost like being able to brainstorm with yourself. So I had this problem that I kept in the back of my mind about what can a writer do who only has a short amount of time to be able to write. Along with my reading and studying, I came upon a post on a social networks uh, group that I belong to where someone did a, a men made mention of a mechanism that uh, Feynman, the famous uh, particle physicist, Feynman used to keep a list of problems that he was working on. And any time he learned something new, he would always weigh his new material against that list of problems. So I began using that technique to try to see if I could come up with a mechanism to solve Stacy's problem, my niece's problem. So I'll leave the note there, and tomorrow I will connect these two pieces of my history together and show you one of the pieces that really started to make a connection as to how this system could work. See you tomorrow. Bye-bye.